The core of iClone is facial animation, and the 3D actors inside iClone give you the fastest way to bring characters to life using your own recorded voice. This is Bernard from the Chuck and the Neighbors pack, and we'll, today we'll show you how you can bring him to life using your own recorded voice and then do some simple facial animation with Reillusion's powerful facial animation puppeteering tools. With our character selected on the, on the screen, we can go ahead and select the Animation tab from the top of the menu. Uh, the submenu will allow us to single out facial animation. With that selected, you'll see that the Modify panel on the right-hand side gives you a detailed view of things that you can do with audio, either record audio or open an MP3 or a WAV file. So we'll go ahead and select Record you'll see that the record wave panel will open. And this is a simple sound recorder box. Uh, you have the ability to choose your input device here. You can also adjust the uh, input volume um, if you need to adjust that. And then a uh, record button for you to be able to record something for your character to say. Hello, this is iClone from Reillusion. Today we'll show you how you can animate any digital actor in a flash with your voice inside iClone. Okay, so we'll get just a scratch vocal in there to start working with. You'll see that the waveform there uh, appears on the screen now, and we can just select OK to automatically process that Hello, on our character. So what we see in that first playback is just a dry lip sync. And this lip sync is it's being generated um, by the audio that we recorded. You can find this on the timeline if you open up F3 or use the F3 hotkey to open up your timeline. And then you can go to character and then you can select Bernard. And then from Bernard, you'll want to select face. Now here on the timeline, you'll see this clip that we just recorded is the audio that Bernard is speaking here. If I drop that arrow down you'll see the audio that we recorded and we'll zoom out a bit so we can see more and you've got zoom tools on the top also if you just click up here in the um, number timeline you can go ahead and just do a control plus and minus to zoom in and out so that's another way to navigate if you zoom in further, you'll see not only that we have the waveform here, but there's also all of the lip shapes have been tracked and are available as keys. Now, if you wanted to do some editing of that, you could just double click on one of those keys and then you could select a different mouth shape or even change uh, the response or the expressiveness of that mouth shape. So how, how expressive it, it would be at that certain point. So you have a lot of fine editing detail that you can dig down into. It's all totally optional. Um, the timeline can be hidden by just selecting F3 again, and that closes it. So now, again, Bernard has just a very dry lip sync. We'll take a look at that again here. Hello, this is iClone from Reillusion. Today we'll show you how you can So the next thing that we want to do is we want to work with Bernard's facial animation um, beyond the lip sync. The lip sync is great that we've got that to begin with, but the next thing we want to do is add a layer of facial animations for emotion. There's two ways to do that. Um, first of all, there's the fast way, uh, the quick solution, which is called an expression style. And you can see that here on the right hand side. We can choose something like angry. If we wanted to generate an angry feel from Bernard instantly, then we could just select that and procedurally, um, iClone will assign the emotion completely across the timeline um, of the entire spoken voice for your character. So the entire time he's speaking, you're gonna have this, um, this procedural animation being recorded onto it. We also have the expression strength slider that's just under this expression style. You can grab this slider bar and adjust it, and that's like a global expression strength adjustment bar. Now, the, th the next way that we can uh, do animation is with puppeteering. And so I'm going to remove the animation we just put on Bernard here. You always have Control Z for undo to back out any animation that you've already put into the scene. Okay. 
And now what I'm going to do is open up on the right hand side, we have our puppeteering panel. And the puppeteering panel gives you uh, the ability to toggle on or off any of the muscles in the face so that you can select from different muscles to control. And then when you want to control them, you hit preview. And then to audition what this control might look like, you're, you're going to puppeteer with your mouse. You hit the space bar and now you can start moving your mouse around to see what those chosen muscles might look like as, as a set or as a control set for doing facial animation or puppeteering. Now, that might be what you're looking for, may not be. One way that we can do something a little easier is by choosing via face profile. And that's on the left hand side. We can choose one of our actors and then choose a profile like angry or uh, we can choose something like smiley. We'll do smiley, hit preview, hit your space bar again. And now I'm puppeteering. Um, preview, you could also consider this as like the auditioning mode. So now I can puppeteer and see how this is looking. Um, and I'm also using iClone's picture in picture view so that I can see a side view and also a forward view simultaneously. That tool is located right here at the top of the screen, mini viewport it's called. Um, you can toggle it on or off. And it also has a control panel. Uh, that comes with it so you can change the location as well. So it's very helpful. This will allow you to preview um, different cameras inside the scene like preview camera, other assigned cameras and so on. So it's very helpful. And when puppeteering, one thing that's very useful is if you have the eyes selected, click your mouse and you will blink. The character blinks when you click. So you can save a whole lot of time just putting blinks into a scene by doing clicks this way. So let's do some facial animation recording. We'll, we'll select something a little more pleasant for um, Bernard here. We'll go back to our smiley like this. And you can see I've got some head tilt in there as well. That head tilt is controlled by these two tools here. I can turn off the head tilting and also the head orientation. Now if I use this tool. His head doesn't tilt, it just turns a bit. If I turn that tilt back on, you'll see the head tilt from side to side also. And we can toggle them both off. We toggle them both off and then hit preview to audition. Now we're only puppeteering just the face. So it's usually pretty important to use those to get a convincing performance from your actor, especially when puppeteering. Okay, so now I've got um, an idea of what I want to use from our facial profiles um, or from the um, different muscle features that I might have toggled on or off. I'm pretty happy. I want to puppeteer this emotion here that I'm auditioning again. If you wanted to go even further, however, and tweak um, the weight uh, that is put on each one of these facial features whenever they're being puppeteered. This edit property rollout box will allow you to edit all of these weights um, so you can get very technical if you want with your animation or you can keep it high level and just use the tools at the graphic user interface level. So for animation we'll go ahead and we'll make sure our playhead is at the point where we want to animate which is at the beginning and now I'm going to hit record and this time when we hit the space bar we actually are going to be recording onto the timeline so on the timeline now we're going to record some facial animation and I will go ahead and show you this is going to be on the Bernard's timeline here this is going to show up in our expression track right here whenever we see that gets recorded there so we'll open up our puppeteering panel and we'll choose our emotion that we want to use which is smiling and this time I'm going to hit the space bar to record hello this is I blink blink So just some very easy, um, very subtle animation. And, and usually this is what works very well. So now we can play that back because the power of real time, we can instantly see our results. Not only when we do it, but instantly when we're done, we can also 
um, see those again. And we could refine that if we want. You can see the clip that's been added here to the timeline for all of the animation we just did. And this timeline is actually a multi-pass timeline as well, which means we could go back to the beginning or at any point across the timeline here and record more facial animation. So to demonstrate that, um, I'll just select the eyes this time. And I'm going to record a second pass now with just the eyes, uh, controlling the eyes. So when I move my mouse, the eyes will follow the mouse and then that will be recorded to the timeline as a, as a layer on top of the, the uh, expression track. Hello, this is Icon from Real Illusion. So it's I'm just controlling illusion. where the eyes are looking around this time. So do some eyes back and forth a little bit. Maybe he looks up. Whoa, that's, that's up. And so I can hit the space bar when I'm done recording. So now I've recorded the eye animation on top of the facial animation. So now we can preview this all together. Today we'll show you how you can animate any digital actor in a flash with your voice inside iCloud. And that's facial animation inside iClone. It takes your voice, a little bit of time with the timeline and facial puppeteering tools, and you can bring digital actors to life in a flash.